Okay, let's try it again. Hey, I can even hear it now. So good stuff. Let's let's start over, shall we? So uh, welcome. We're glad you're here. Welcome to the folks who are online. Ruth Ann Noonan, it's your birthday. We celebrate with you and we celebrate this warming weather. Thanks be to God that the snow is about gone. And uh, Lord, you blessed us with that gift, but this sunshine is a better gift. We're Send us more, please. <laughs> Uh, the Christian Education Committee uh, is thankful for you and for your gifts to the blanket offering. Uh, the, uh, the blanket offering helps people, not just with blankets, but with essential things like garden tools and fishing nets and sewing machines so they can start their business, so they can feed their families, so they can change their lives, so God's blessings can flow. So if and as you are blessed, if you share a gift uh, to the blanket offering uh, uh, today or, or next Sunday, it's a blessing. You can share by check, or you can go onto our webpage. There's a link there, uh, or you can go directly to Church World Service to their webpage, and you can share there. But thank you for sharing, and praise be to God for this day. Let us now join together in our call to worship. It's from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer.
Hear now our call to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. O God, whose power is made perfect in weakness, whose wisdom appears as foolishness to this world, we thank you for the scandal of the cross. Forgive us for not embracing it or serving you. Overturn our bogus ways of behaving and believing. Scatter our false notions of easy discipleship. Challenge our empty ideas. Correct our phony pieties. Change us so that we are not content or contained as a sterile, insular institution. Raise to ruins what is distorted in us and raise us to new life so that we may be the body of Christ in and for the world. With fear and joy, we ask this in the name of our Savior. Amen. Let us continue to offer our confession of sins in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Christ was born for us, and he lived for us. Christ died for us and was raised for us. Christ now lives for us and reigns for us and prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a part of God's new creation, Behold, our old lives have already passed away, and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Our scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 18, or rather chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you may have heard this news. It probably was on the glossy magazines at the checkout counters as you were down at Kroger recently. But Hollywood superstar Gal Gadot is expecting. She posted a selfie announcing the news. She's wearing no makeup, and she looks absolutely beautiful. Her handsome husband and her beautiful daughters are on either side of Gadot, who's slightly showing Here's the picture of perfection. Beauty, harmony, bliss, and everything that most of the time we are not. Garrison Keillor is closer to our reality. Keillor tells the story of how his wife and he made the mistake 
of taking their baby to a fancy restaurant. Halfway through the meal, the toddler got sick. Realizing what was about to happen, Keeler got up out of his chair and rushed to his daughter just in time to cup his hands as she threw up in them. You don't find many selfies of those kind of moments on social media. You don't find many selfies like that because we want perfection. We worship success. And we demand of others and ourselves and of God that life, in the words of the late Carrie Fisher, that life not imitate art, but that life be art. The picture of perfection. Beauty, harmony, bliss, and everything that most of the time we are not. We think of heaven and imagine clouds with God rays of light descending and arched rainbows shining over us as blessings rain down. Jews demand signs and Greeks demand wisdom, but we, we want it all. And if, if God is in his heaven, then we want to see it. We want to know that God's there. We want to know that God's in his heaven and that all is right with the world, with our loved ones and with us. That's what we want, but this is what we've got. We look at our lives and we read the news and we know that all is not right. And if, if God's in his heaven, then we conclude that God's either an absentee landlord who doesn't care or an impotent ally who just can't get the job done. But what if God already has? What if the God who we want to come someday as a can't-miss conquering superhero already has come as an easy-to-miss crucified suffering servant? What if God didn't come to force everything into perfect order, but to simply offer himself in perfect love? so we could choose that perfect way. What if that changed everything and we just can't see it because we're too busy looking for something else? The cross looks weak and foolish to us wised up postmodern sophisticates. But those who are really in the know, says Paul, can see what we can't. They see in the cross, in Jesus' sacrifice, not a loser, but a Savior, who doesn't end suffering by banishing it, but who transforms suffering by entering it, who offers us a way to conquer the world, not by domination, but through compassion, who calls us not to win by being first, but to overcome by being last and putting others first. Those who are enslaved to the dead-end ways of the world just don't get it. But those who do find everything they need to live. What if the God you're looking for up there in heavenly clouds of glory to bless you someday is really the God who is here right now in your hellish hours of agony to save you today. Not by miracling you out of suffering, but by sustaining you through suffering so that you emerge transformed, reborn, resurrected. Let's be wise enough to give God the benefit of the doubt that even in your mess, Christ is with you. That even in this dumpster fire of a world, that Christ daily works to heal, bless, and love. Let's be wise enough to further discover God's presence by walking in Christ's ways, by forgiving, not avenging, by sharing, not hoarding, by demanding not perfection from others or ourselves, but by giving grace practicing patience, and living love. As we do, we'll discover God's strength through our weakness and Christ's presence in our pain. We'll realize that God doesn't expect us to be supermen and wonder women 
to earn his love, but that God simply wants us to be humane, humble, good people to receive his grace. Let's all welcome that gift and live that resurrection. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the new signs of life that are literally springing up. We thank you, Lord, for the greening and warming of your earth this spring. We're thankful for the continuing good news of people becoming vaccinated against uh, the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you will speed the day when all of us are vaccinated, when we can put away the masks and we can return to, to life as normal as, as it was before. We ask, Lord, your grace upon all who serve to protect us, for all frontline and essential workers. We ask, Lord, your grace upon our leaders that you may help them to help us all uh, out of this pandemic. We pray, Lord, for our community, for our neighbor churches, that you will bless them and all of us with your care and love. We especially pray for those who were hungry and hurting, for those who were least, last, and lost. Oh God, send us to them so that they may know your love through our compassion. We pray as well for all who are in need of healing. We ask your grace upon all who are ill with the coronavirus and those who are quarantining. We ask your healing blessings for Deb, for Patricia, for Debbie, for Becky and Jim, for Susan's friend Jan, for Roger, for Dick, for Pam's father Paul, for Marty, Carrie, and Stephanie for Linda and Bill, for Peg and for Barb. We ask, O oh Lord, your grace upon all, for all who are grieving, that as they mourn, they may know the comfort of your peace and the, the solace of your presence. We ask your grace for Crystal and her family as they grieve the death of Crystal's father, Bob. We ask as well your grace for Nancy, Mandy, Kyle, and Brittany, for Jim and Rob, and for the family and friends of John Haynes and Helen Milligan and Arlene Painter and David Phillips and Barry Poole and Betty Showalter. We ask as well your grace for Don and Dottie and their family. We pray for those who are in transition. We ask your grace for Kevin and Laura. Be with Susan's mother, Patricia. We ask, Lord, for you to continue to bless Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd, and be with all of those who are taking care of us during this uncertain time. O oh Lord, we come to you with other burdens and concerns, and we would ask that in the stillness of this hour that you would help us to surrender them before your throne of grace, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. So, Lord, in that mercy, receive now these, our silent prayers. Oh, God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the
charge and the benediction, I charge us all to be wise enough to embrace the foolishness of God for us to discover the deep wisdom and eternal love of God in our crucified and risen Savior. Let us go forth and live that truth, share that life, and become alive in that resurrection. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.